everyone. Welcome to Tianjin University Ambassador Talks. My name is Timothy Joseph Tagal. I'm an Admission Promotion Ambassador of Tianjin University. And today, we are going to discuss about the major of teaching Chinese to speakers of other languages. And we have been accompanied by our current Tianjin University master's student, that is John. Hello, John. How do you do? Hi. Hello. <laughs> I'm yeah. good. How about you? Yes, I'm very good as well. And of course, I am very grateful for your opportunity to share with us about the major today. And of course, this is your very first time in Tianjin University Ambassador Talks. So would you briefly introduce yourself? Okay. Um, well, first of all, thank you for having me. Uh, my name is John. I am from Argentina. I came to Tianjin University in 2019. See, yes. Um, so I was in the middle of the, <laughs> the eye of the hurricane, let's say. Yes. And um, yeah, I study um, a master's in teaching Chinese to speakers of other languages because I really like the language and I want to become a, a teacher. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yes. Uh, of course, uh, before you have prepared the slides for us, uh, may I ask you, when you decided to apply for master, how do you know about Tianjin University at first? Well, to be honest, I already studied here in China. I went to a university in a city, called, in a very famous city called Xi'an, where yeah. the Terracotta warriors are. Yes. Yeah. And... But back there, it was just one semester, and I thought it was, like, not enough. Yes. So I wanted to come back and improve my Chinese. I so I decided to look up for um, cities that are closer to either Beijing or Shanghai. Yes, I see. And Tianjin kept coming up, oh. like... Yeah. They say that it's very, you know, convenient. If you want to go to Beijing, you hop on a train yes. and in half an hour, you're just there. Yeah. And the prices, uh, the, um, I mean, the living cost here is not as high as in Beijing. So yes, of course. I thought it was very convenient. Yeah. And I searched online and there was one friend that was here. So I was like, well, okay, um, I'll talk to him, see if he can help me out. Oh, of course, yeah. And he recommended the school, he recommended the university. So yeah, basically it was yeah, So overall you enjoy, right, your study life in Tianjin University? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's great, it's great. I really like it. Okay, uh, I think you have uh, prepared something for us about this major. You can start your share screen. Okay, so let's see. So, what we have here, <laughs> let me just, yeah. So the School of International Education, um, I've divided it into four parts. Um, first is a very brief introduction of the schools. Then it's, um, we're going to talk about a bit about the language and the different courses that the university or the school provides for foreign students. Then we have the activities, um, which I'm very fond of. I really like them. And uh, later on, we will talk about the actual major. Um, yes. So as regards the school, it was established in the year 2000. It's fairly new. Um, but it's always the case in, in all of the China universities. Um, so it's in charge, as the date says, of all the international students, of all the international education. So when we first get here to China and we come here to the university, <clears throat> the first place where we have to go is there, to the School of International Education, yes. to enroll ourselves and and they will assign us our different uh, dormitories and our different you know university if you have to go to the new campus or to the or stay in the old campus and all that 
Um, of course, they are also in charge of designing the language courses, the Chinese courses, and the also the elective courses or cultural courses, let's say. Um, so, so far, there are students coming from more than 42 countries of the world, which is awesome. As you can see on the stairs there, we have the word well, welcome in a lot of languages. A lot of languages. Um, for me personally, the I speak Spanish. Spanish is my mother tongue, yes. so it's there, right there on the on the I. It's the second one. That's bienvenidos. So yeah, I, I was very happy to see that. <laughs> yes, of course. Then we have the language courses. Uh, as regards the language courses, uh, they offer courses for eight levels. There are eight levels of complexity, of complexity let's say. Yes. And they all, they are all from um, 8.30 in the morning mm. to uh, 12 in, in midday. Yes. And they have, I'm sorry, from Monday to Friday. And they have a listening, reading, speaking, and comprehensive classes. So from Monday to Friday, every day, you have this very intensive uh, Chinese lessons, uh, which I think are great. They are very helpful. Um, and uh, the teachers are great. They are very um, helpful. They are very kind. And yeah, they're basically awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah. May I ask here about the learning? Is the level of the Chinese uh, adjusted to our level or it is set the same for all students that in this class? Mm, that's a good question. Okay, so when you first arrive to the university and you go to the, international, to the School of International Education to enroll, they'll tell you, okay, so tomorrow we will have a level test I see. and you have to go. Okay, okay. So you go the next day, you sit in front of a computer and you have like 100 questions yes. that you are going to fill and you're going to complete uh, to the best of your ability. Because like, let's say the first 20 questions are very basic. Yes then the next 20 are a bit more complex and so on and so forth so when you cannot do them anymore you cannot you you don't feel like you can uh continue you will stop and the next day they will tell you okay so your level is a level d oh. so they will oh. send you to d class Oh, I see. Yes. Yeah. So it's it's very good and it's very accurate, I'd say. Yes, of course. Yeah. And you can choose if you're not happy with the level. Like you can, there's always like the first week is always like the adjustment week, let's say. Yes. Um, where you will see a lot of students going out of class and coming in. So like new phases. Um, and you can actually um, choose to go to a higher level or a lower a lower level. So if you choose to go to a lower level, it's okay. There's no problem. You can just go and that's all. But if you want to go to a higher level, you need to take a test. <laughs> you need to take a brief test. Yes. Um, to yes. see if you can cope with the level of the class that you want to go to. Uh, let's see, yeah. So yeah, that, 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 there's a level test and they will assign you to the one that suits your Chinese skills and level, yeah. Yeah. Okay, then moving on, let's see, we have the activities. Yes. This is very interesting, at least for me, because the school has to organize 
cultural activities or trips. So the international students learn more about the culture and the places of China. Yes. So for example, on the first semester, we went to the summer palace in Beijing, uh, which is very popular. Yeah. Um, and also we have um, extra classes, like in the mornings you get the language course, but in the afternoon you can choose from a different, uh, a bunch of classes, of cultural classes, like for example, um, business Chinese, yeah. or uh, calligraphy class, or a different HSK classes. HSK is the exam, the international exam. So you can prepare for the HSK. And there are different instruments. If you're interested in musical instruments, there are musical instruments. There are uh, yoga, tai chi, and a whole bunch of, of them. <laughs> Go to calligraphy class. And then we have other classes like characters classes where you um, try to rec try to you know put some logic on the language because at least for us uh, in, in Spanish we don't use characters we just use yeah. letters yeah. Yes. and yes. seeing a character is like like when my mom says all the the things that I put she's like what does it say there there are like little figures and I can't I don't know they, they look like pictures I was like yes because they have their own meaning um, so in that class the teacher um, explains us a different part of the a character yeah. and their yeah. meaning so we can more you know easily understand them or sometimes you can actually like guess the meaning of a character if you know more or less which parts uh, has it has. Then we have uh, festivals, different festivals. Mm, the one that I like is the Crab Apple Blossom Festival, which is about to happen in, in like April or something like that. And that is when the Crab Apple Blossoms, the, the Crab Apple Flower Blossoms, and it's very, very beautiful. The campus is full of flowers. So people come in the campus and there are different activities, like different schools. Uh, the students prepare different activities. And this year, uh, I'm sorry, last year, we, the school um, gave us the opportunity to sing a song using sign language, using yeah. our, our hands to express that, that song. It was very good. We really liked it. Um, then we have the sports events. It's very popular. Every university has them. Um, and last year it was an integrated sport event. It was the first time, I think, where international students participated along with Chinese students. So if you were on the, for example, let's say, volleyball team, you could, as, as a foreigner, you could participate there with the Chinese. That's, that's good. That's a good opportunity to, um, you know, to communicate with uh, Chinese people and make friends with them and all that. that that's that's yeah. great. Then um, I'm going to talk very briefly about these two trips. Uh, the Tianjin Great Wall. There is a part of the Great Wall. It's here oh, in. Yes. So we went to see that with the teachers. It was very good. And the we did a trip to Gansu in a province called Lanzhou, which is very famous for his for its lamian. Their noodles. They're called Lanzhou lamian. Oh yeah. And there in that school. I'm sorry. There yeah. There in that school, in that place, sorry, the university is in charge of one school. So every university um, has to support 
a school that is located in a area in, in development. So uh, to help them out and together grow and grow. So we went there, we went to the school. It was really cool. Um, we saw the things that the university provided them and we saw the kids. Yeah. And yeah. we also went to some of the places that that city had to offer. Uh, there you can see a waterfall. It was very beautiful. And we went to museums. We also went to the mountain there. So it was great. I, I really liked it. It was like a, a three day trip. Yeah. So it was awesome. Yeah. yeah. So From, uh, it's not only. It's not only study of the Chinese that you have in classes, but it's like you have a continuous field trip everywhere and you can experience and it's a good way to practice Chinese directly. Yeah, yes, that's great. Um, that's why I say that they, that the school organizes this for you to be more like involved in the life in China, involved with the people, the culture, So I, I never been to Lanzhou and if the university didn't uh, take us, I wouldn't like ever go, I guess, like, because it's going to, the, to that mountain. It's like eh? not a very touristic spot. So you get to go there and it's beautiful and it's not very advertised. So I think it was a great opportunity to be there. And we were there like, So we were like 20 people, 20 international students. It was great. It was awesome. And I'm sorry, as regards the um, Crabapple Blossom Festival, that those are a few pictures. Um, so we, we were like 15 students doing this. We learned it for a week and we learned how to sing that song. And even the the TV station came here to make a report and all that. So it was great. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Now, talking specifically about the masters in teaching Chinese, um, the requirements are fairly simple. <laughs> you have to have a bachelor's degree, you have to be under the age of 35, and you have to have an HSK-5 certificate. And it's also recommended an HSK-K, which is the oral one, yeah. because they're separate right now. Um, but let me warn you that an HSK-5, according to what I believe, is not enough. Oh, you need to, to make it a step further because all of your classes are in Chinese. Yes. And they are all um, lecturers and they probably don't know English. So of course it's all in Chinese because it's a language course and it's all given in Chinese. So yes. A, a bit more is is better, <laughs> I think. Yes, uh, because it's surprising that HSK-5 isn't enough because currently I'm in English medium in my other chemical engineering major and I'm right now learning HSK-4. Uh, it's still very difficult for me. And then you say that HSK-5 is not enough for Chinese class. <laughs> so I think that yeah. maybe it's better to maybe learn more outside of the HSK itself. And of course, you say mention about HSKK. Is the level the Zhongji or Gaoji, intermediate or advanced? Yes, it's, it should be Zhongji. Uh -huh. um, that's what they ask. That's what they suggest. Mm, yeah. But then again, a, a language consists of four parts: of listening, speaking, um, writing abilities. So. Right now, I don't know if you know, but they are changing that. The HSK will no longer be two parts, HSK yeah. and HSK-K. It will be just one 
thing. So when you take the exam, you will also be tested for your oral, for your speaking abilities. Mm, I see. Um, so I think it's very important to either come prepared uh, with a an HSK six or to here take advantage of your language course here and really study to get even though you did you, you don't take the HSK six yeah you can yeah. Uh, get to that level mind you that when you graduate you do need to have HSK six. I see. So yeah. you enter with you enter with an HSK five, and before graduating, you need to have an HSK six. Yeah, because if the level goes higher, I think people will stop at the general level of HSK four or five because, according to general experience, if you went to HSK six, you also learn about the culture, the history something that the vocabulary each is much more advanced and then yeah you have to put more effort to reach a higher level chinese yes yes exactly um so and it is case six uh the vocabulary has a lot of the a lot a lot of the words that the teachers use i mean i've realized that um and in HSK 5, you don't go very in-depth with the language. But on HSK 6, you do. You do because it's a lot of words. And they are used in more academic situations. Yeah. So, yeah. I would suggest if you want to take like advantage of this, uh, of, the, of the courses, uh, come with an HSK 6, I would say. So, yeah. So let's see. Um, as regards the content, um, the first year consists of classes. Um, we've got classes, for example, teaching Chinese as a second language, or second second language acquisition, or Chinese culture and promotion, linguistics in Chinese. That's hard. Linguistics, <laughs> and then the second year <laughs> consists of classroom observation, which is what I'm currently doing now. Um, and of course, you have to write your thesis. Yeah. And classes observation, we will we will talk about that a little bit later, um, because of of course because of the pandemic. Um, those observations are basically online observations. And then in, in all of the semesters, you are required to write reports, um, like thesis advancement reports, um, different lectures that you have, um, that you have went to or uh, listened to, um, reading reports about the material you are going to use for your thesis and all that. And then we have uh, two major instances where, let's say, two tests. Um, the first one is when you propose your, your topic, your thesis topic, to uh, a jury, to five teachers. Yeah. And they give you suggestions like I should say I think that you should adjust this for let's say Argentina students. So you just readjust your thinking to to, to that according to their uh, suggestions. And then um, there's the second one, which is the progress of your thesis. Like how is it going? Uh, we told you to do this, 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 and that. So how did you develop that idea? And you say, okay, so I wrote, I wrote this, this, and that. And I found this and those results. Um, and they give you further um, suggestions. 
And then comes the, 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 the final instance, which is the defense. So yeah. And as regards the, let me just uh, tell you a bit more about the classes. So this is an example of a class, which is Chinese culture and promotion. Because of course, as teachers, we need to be able to transmit to the students yes. Uh, yes. part of the culture, because with every language comes the culture. And it's, I think it's very interesting. So in this class, we basically um, learn or we make a class, we make an activity, a cultural activity, we organize it. And we tell the student, we invite international students to the to this event. And for example, <clears throat> you have some cooking there, um, you have some lanterns, you have some paper cutting, you have some traditional festivities. For example, here we're making tongsu. Um, this one and um, tides. So there are very interesting activities for uh, foreign students. Um, so yeah, uh, you can learn how to cook uh, Chinese cuisine. You can learn how to the different traditions they have, or for example, New Year. Um, so yeah, I think it's 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 a very good class and it's a fun class. That's that's very nice to have because you get to play around you get to uh, and and while you're learning because that is also important but having fun i think is also very important yes of course so that is all from my part do you have any other questions that you would like me to answer yeah, of course. And of course, I'm curious also about the range of the learning of the Chinese in the class. Uh, do you also learn according to Hanpan? Because right now I'm also learning according to that. Do you know the book of Han Yu Chao Chong, the standard course? So it, I remember that it has also the book of HSK 5 and 6. I mean, do you also learning according to that curriculum or is there any other method of learning that exist in your class uh oh you mean inside the class yes okay so inside the class the master course we use books but not those books we use for example history books oh, to learn history. Yeah. yeah so each class has its own book um so according to that to that class is topic or theme in linguistics we we use a linguistic book so yeah but as regards to the language course that we previously discussed there you do follow the hsk standard course book mm. yeah yeah i see yeah uh, I wonder also how is your, you know, out of the fun experience that you have and the classes that is immersive, uh, how do you feel about the task and exam? Is it also many or how do you think? As regards the master's course, um, we don't have exams. Oh. Uh, well, it, it depends on the teacher, actually. Oh. Uh, it depends on them. And most of them will ask you to write a report. So that is their exam. So when you finish yes. that particular class, the teacher says, okay, so I will give you one month for you to write a report about this, this, and that topic. Some of them gave you like options. They say, okay, so I have all these three options. You choose one and you write a report about that. Uh, yeah. Um, the report length vary from teacher to teacher, but it's basically you know five thousand words or two thousand words or around that that amount. Um, then some of them might, for example, in history, we had to take an exam, 
um, case history, um, you need to assess the knowledge that you have because if you just write a report on history, it's like, mm. so you, we, we wrote a report and then we did a test. So yeah, that was, that was hard. Um, but the rest is just reports. Yeah. Uh, and also, I'm curious about the second year because you're already getting serious about, you know, graduating, writing more reports and thesis. Uh, does the teacher, the lecturer, helps you with the topic of your thesis or you have to find it yourself and present it to the lecturer and, you know, like confirming to them whether you can do that thesis? Well, well uh, as in every... Hmm, Every major, you get a you get a tutor, you get a teacher, and that teacher, in my case, mm. it's an art teacher. Mm. It's not a language teacher, but he's very mm, he's very kind. He's very yeah, friendly, and he suggested that I do something with art because he is an arts teacher and he can help me a lot there. And he was like, I can give you a lot of books and I can teach you a lot. And I was like, yes, okay. But um, my thing is teaching and language. I know that parts of the language include art as a cultural thing, you know, Chinese calligraphy or Chinese painting. But for me, it was more interesting to um, study some topics that specifically concern the language. Yeah, I understand. Mm. Yeah, I'm currently researching uh, euphemisms because as international students, yeah. as foreigners, we sometimes don't, they don't teach us euphemisms because in every language they are different. Yeah. Euphemisms for the people that don't know um, are um, words or expressions that we use to avoid taboo language. For example, yeah. we generally don't say my father died. We say yeah. my father passed away. So in that way, for example, we, 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 we use it to ease conversation. Like you're not, if you bump into a friend and right now he's super fat, you will not say, yo, you're super fat. No, you'd say like, oh, wow, you, you, you're very healthy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, it's a very big challenge because, you know, I mean, Chinese is still our second language, right? But when we are, you know, in your case, you are forced to research it to a more deeper level. I think... Yeah, it's a, it's a big challenge. Uh, is the teacher automatically assigned for you or you can choose the teacher? I mean, it's a big challenge for you right now. <laughs> well, uh, you see, the thing is that in my case, I got here in 2019 in September. So my first semester of the language course was offline. Mm, yes. um, then the second semester, coronavirus came, and the second semester was all online. Mm. And then the pandemic was still going on. It was relatively a new thing. So they just assigned us our teachers. Oh, like in the so office, nice. they did all that automatically because I was the only student here. I am still the only student here doing my master's and the rest is back on their home in oh, home, yeah. their home yeah. so um they but normally in normal under normal circumstances um there'd be a presentation there'd be um all the teachers on one side all the students on one side the students present themselves introduce themselves and they say what they like and like, I would like to research about this specific point, this specific grammar point, let's mm -hmm. say. 
Yes. And then the teacher would say, oh, wow, I, I'm a grammar teacher. I really like grammar. So would you like to be my student? And they would say, okay, yeah, cool. <laughs> Basically. Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, I think I hope that you can, you know, go through that path of research about uh, euphemism uh, successfully. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, before we uh, close our talks, I think I want to like want you to describe about what is the job prospect in the future of this major. Yeah. Well, as the major implies, uh, teaching Chinese to speakers of other languages. What you can do here is go everywhere around the world yeah. and, and teach Chinese to students whose Chinese is not their mother tongue. So you can either um, go to your own country and start a school or do tuitions, or you can even ask if you're very hardworking, you can <laughs> you can even start a Confucius Institute, oh. which is one of the you know the official Hanban Institute for learning uh, Chinese. Mm, yes. So, yeah. So uh, I think you can also be a, a teacher. Like you know, there's some foreign student who understand Chinese, maybe. You can also like open a free online course, you know, like joining. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, of course, if, after you graduate, become a teacher, are you uh, automatically licensed with Hanpan certificate that you can teach? Or you have to, you know, like test again if you want to become a teacher? No, no, no. You're automatically a teacher. Oh, I yeah. see. That's great. Yeah. yeah uh, of course, uh, before we end, I think that you can motivate uh, the viewers, give us a message that to choose Tianjin University as a study choice. Okay. So I welcome you, everyone, to come here to Tianjin University. Um, it is a very beautiful university. It's the first university in modern China. Um, the campus is beautiful. It's very big. Uh, it has a lot of lakes. It has a lot of parks. And the old campus particularly is very close to the city center. So if you also like to go around town, visit also the different parks and all that, you can go. Um, and there are lots of international students. There are lots of Chinese students. So you can make a lot of friends that's a thing that happens with our major. I mean, if, if there's language related things, then you probably want to make a lot of Chinese friends. Um, so you get the opportunity to do that. And yeah, it's basically great. Uh, I really like it. And that's basically one of the things why I decided to stay here uh, and not return home uh, for the you know pandemic. So I opted to stay here in Tianjin because I really like it here. So. Yeah, of course. Uh, everyone that is about the explanation and sharing from John today about the major of teaching Chinese to speakers of other languages. So if you are uh, able to increase your Chinese level to HSK5 and you want to take master's in Tianjin University, please consider to apply to Tianjin University since the 2022 admissions are still open. And of course, you can visit the link of the description of the this description of the major in the website of the Engine University. And thank you so much, John, for your opportunity and sharing today about this major. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and of course, uh, after we hear your challenges and your experience, I think we all hope for your successful future endeavors uh, in Tianjin University. And of course, we hope to meet soon offline in Tianjin University. Yes, uh, thank you everyone. Like, comment, and subscribe to this channel. If you want me to discuss other contents relating to Tianjin University, you can comment down below. And yeah, thank you everyone. See you on the next episode. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye-bye everyone. Bye.